go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to the Stonks Go Moon podcast. My guest today, Dr. Anish Mohammed, co-founder of Panther Protocol. Welcome to the pod. Uh, thank you very much and thank you for having me. The doctors in the house, I love it when I can say there's a doctor on the podcast. So before we delve into Panther Protocol, what made you get into crypto, right? Where was your entry point? Obviously, you can see you're a doctor, so there's some education, there's some higher education in it. But what first of all started this journey for you? Oh, that's a very silly story. If I tell you the story, you're going to laugh your head off. No, please, so, please. A very, a very long while back, a gentleman... Uh, he used to um, write puzzles for various magazines, uh, mostly new scientists and uh, Martin Gartner, to be more precise, and okay. uh, a scientific American. And uh, I was born in India. My dad used to subscribe to a magazine called Science Today. Okay. And after RSA was published, there was a challenge called RSA 129. Mm-hmm. And you have to take it into consideration that I'm a, I was a kid, uh, 10, yes. 11, 12 years old. Okay. And I used to normally solve all these things. And then there was this thing, the challenge was posted. And it said, you get a hundred US dollars if you solve this. Oh, and, uh, money. <laughs> he, he, uh, look, you know, you normally yeah. look at, you're a kid, you're yeah. a kid, hundred dollars in India means a lot of money. And you look at this and go, this is really interesting. I should be able to solve this. And, you know, that's where the start of the journey started. Then, you know. Were, were you good in maths? Were you good in maths at school? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Pretty so good. it had to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it, then uh, my journey went a long way around. So my parents wanted me to go to med school. So as you probably recognize, I was way ahead of my age <laughs> in my ability to do math and other things. So uh, my dad didn't want me to go to engineering school, so he was like the deputy director of education for my state. So okay. I went to med school. When I finished med school, I said, you know what? I am done with this BS. Then I went and uh, worked on micropayment systems for Ericsson in Sweden. And in yeah. between, I got into, uh, you know, skill of trip because I was always interested in cryptography. Yes. Then I got into the cryptography mailing list. And uh, somewhere along the lines in between, I went to grad school to do cryptography. So that's another piece. So, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, 2013, officially, 2011, 2012, I was involved yeah. a bit. I ran into Amir and I, along with him, we ran a, uh, you know, mining workshop for people to mine Bitcoin. Yes. 2013, I ran into Ripple guys. They asked me if I could be an advisor. I agreed to be an advisor. In 2014, 2015, I ran into all the usual suspects. Uh, you know, I knew Stefan Toll, I knew Vinay because I was involved in open source robotics. He yes. used to do Hexia, so I knew him. Then Victor Tron came to couple my talks. So and Victor asked me if I helped him. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, I joined the Ethereum Swamp team. I was one of the reviewers of that. Then from then on, you know, things happened. I knew Trent, he was a friend of mine. Again, my interest in machine learning. I knew him from his machine learning days, my machine learning days. Yes. And uh, he did Ocean Protocol. I worked on it as an advisor and a friend of his. Like, you know, I, yes. you know, until I got into a lot into ZK, and that's what we have had. That's, okay, that's, so- that's a summary story. <laughs> I love it. No, I, 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 it makes 100% um, um, sense in my head. But now I want to ask you, being, I can, I can call you as do majors, uh, crypto OG, and I think you're in a good position to answer me um why you think privacy is so crucial for the future of DeFi? because it's sort of oh, okay it's the opposite of what you know we want this this new system this open system the system for okay. everyone but now you know but this issue of privacy okay so you would never ask anybody whether you know they if they want to vote whether mm. they want privacy or not right you never yeah. ask that right no and everybody believes in democracy. Everybody in the West believes in democracy. Even in the West, and yeah. Democracy. Just clarify. Yeah, right. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's clarified, <laughs> right? I mean, quote and go to, right? So, and the next, well, obviously, right? Yes. Now, yes. the next bit, 
Yeah, uh, the next bit is like, you can't have democracy without you have the privacy to put the votes on, right? Mm. We agreed to both parts, right? Yes. Society as a whole requires privacy. And let's step side, sideways and look at what is happening in a public blockchain. A okay. public blockchain, every transaction you do is publicly visible, right? Mm. If you want to do some research and you want to have a strategy and you want to deploy the strategy, you're not allowed in that sense. Because yes. of a simple reason, because everybody sees it, I see that you, you're a good trader. I go to the graph, deploy a subgraph to track you down and have a smart contract to copy, copy your trade. So all yes. your research is gone. Yes, I can even like front run you, right? I can even front run you. I yes. take your strategy, run ahead of you, and you're done. Yes. So the depth of the market disappears, poly effect disappears. So all we are saying is like, if we could actually have the same mechanisms that we have in the traditional markets. So for example, mm -hmm. if you were to look at Renaissance Technologies, one of the hedge funds that returns between 30 to 40 percent year on year for the last 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. Simon recently passed away, but like his fund, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. what mm -hmm. they have been doing is essentially their strategy has been private. Why? They can have dark pools. Mm. Okay, we mm. comply. Why can't we have dark pools? So, mm. you know, you know, apples and apples, not like apples and monkeys. Yes, yes. But how do you balance that privacy with regul regulatory compliance? Because obviously, wherever privacy comes in, the government sort of wants to know. Yeah, so uh, I am very happy to describe the process just in a loose sense. So when mm -hmm. you come into a protocol like Panther, there's a class of protocol in that sense. They yeah. all have uh, in a KYC upfront. What that means is like if you want to enter this garden, it's almost a wall garden perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Because the governments of the world actually want uh, certain transactions to be managed, let's put it that way, right? So they okay. want KYC to be done, right? Okay. So you have KYC providers in the traditional, who provide the services to traditional banks, being offered by, you know, Web3 native providers being used. So users come in, they mm -hmm. get KYC, and then they go into the pools. So A, now you're KYC. Now, when you do your transactions, your KYT is attached to it, right? So yeah. effectively, what is happening is like, you know, your transaction is being monitored in that sense by, uh, you know, a bunch of smart contracts to enforce that you don't get into trouble, right? Okay. So you, uh, if you were an institution, your risk of going to jail is close to zero because mm -hmm. if you are a director in the US and if you have all fact non-compliance, apparently the highest risk is like 20 years or something like that, which is ridiculous. But, yes, you know, yes, I, mean, really I haven't is. heard of any bankers who've actually gone to, like I was a retail banker. I was in HSBC before <laughs> I and crypto full time, right? So yeah. I can tell you, you know, you probably know what happened in Mexico, right? HSBC yes, in yes. Mexico, Google it, right? <laughs> so, you know, nobody, like uh, the, the, uh, the funniest of the stories is like the head of uh, technical risk is one of my FTS teammates, okay? Yeah. So I, I saw him in 2017 and I'm like, oh, I haven't seen you in ages. Like, you know, for like 10 plus years, I haven't seen him. He went to Mexico and they brought him back, right? So it's really interesting. Like, you know, such things happen. Yes. But if you are in the world of crypto, you don't have enough of lobbying power. You don't yeah. have enough of uh, banks that support you. So it's, it's kind of tricky. So we are yes. playing the game where we uh, provide the ability for the user to provide what I describe as transcripts to okay. IRS and HMRC and other people. Okay. So they could prove to the regulators or the tax authorities, yes. they are the people who do the transaction. Yes. And if they actually, the regulators actually want to get like full transcripts of the KYC process, they can just go to the KYC provider yes. and the KYC provider would give them, hey, there you go. Yeah. Right. So in theory, it ticks almost all the boxes. Yes. The only challenge you have is like, you can't, do what normally banks do which is like there is like a, before yeah. you do a transaction you can do certain things layer ones don't work like that blockchains yes. don't work like that yes because blockchains are decentralized and you can't actually prevent the transaction inside the chain the only thing you can do is prevent people from you know g taking assets out of their accounts right okay so if you put assets into the thing uh, into a multi social pool, do a transaction, go to Uniswap and do a swap. And now yes. when you're done, if you lose your KYC and you lose your KYT, the same way as bank would do it. Like, okay. if you, you know, if you were to do something and yes. certain times you might lose your KYC. Okay. If that happens, when you go to the bank, they will say, oh, 
you need to give us a bunch of contracts before we could actually release them. Essentially, right. all these details are to verify the KYC. Same yes. kind of mechanism, loosely speaking. This is what you know. Okay. I envisage that that regulators <clears throat> might be happy with. I'm not a regulator. I can't say anything about yes, this. Yes, yes, right? yes. So I'm hopeful that this is the thing that the regulators would be happy with. We okay. will be able to do. Okay, so traditional banks they operate on their own sort of rules and regulations rules for these not for me i mean okay that's my statement that's not saying you're saying it i'm saying it uh but do you think they're sort of open to these privacy in privacy enhancing blockchain technologies or okay so yeah let, 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 let's think this through in a very uh, a very simple sense what okay. is going to happen to our banks okay mm. so banks uh if you work for a large banks what you recognize is a lot of them still have very old co- mainframes with cobalt system cobalt yeah. was a very low bank right? in, the, in the 60s and 70s right so yep. they have a lot of a uh, re- re- lot of infrastructure that's making the transactions very ineffective inefficient two right? to three days and, during not yeah, over a weekend all of, all of that absolutely yeah. okay so add this to the fact that open banking in europe and uk would effectively mean that a newcomer could actually compete with you Yes. and they don't have the legacy stuff right yes. so now you're competing for per transaction cost right mm. and now look at your per transaction cost and look at what you can actually achieve with an L2 uh, on an L1 with the throughputs and almost equivalent uh, you know privacy policy yes. compliance everything reporting requirements all of it okay. right to me that's like a simple uh, logical thing right like okay that's also a very important thing that's also happening so the uh, typically the banks have lots of data they haven't yes. really understood the value of data yet and what mm-hmm. is also happening is the fact that llms have really changed the game right okay and what this means is a new entrance to the game is going to re- like one of the biggest cost for most banks is to run large support centers or service centers yes given llms you could you know Yes, gone, course, right? so can you, like, is that stuff like call centers, ba- uh, yeah. say cashiers, bankers, stuff like that, like inquiries? That, okay, that, okay. Yeah, all of that's going to disappear, right? <clears throat> so wow. can you imagine a new startup turning out? Put LLM on top. Put you know privacy, privacy preserving, compliant, uh, you know disclosure okay. uh, providing uh, protocol on the back end, right? Wow. Job done. Okay, but well, I was really got to, no. You just blew my mind because it's like it, I can actually see that happening because jobs jobs come and go. Those people will just go out, yep. elsewhere. Yeah, um, innovation yep. doesn't ask, you know, no. what is permission? Innovation doesn't permission. No, no. it doesn't ask permission. Market drives innovation drives the market, and yes. market drives regulation. Right. Uh-huh. So, to me, the way I think about it right now is in the next three years. Okay. literally a lot of the banks will have a huge amount of pressure because of the thing that I just described the, the LLM so if you look behind me you will see a pile of books on yes, deep learning yes, I can and I can't see that right okay <laughs> no, so it's like no, we, I can see it I can see it there's a pile okay. yeah so all, okay. all of them are deep learning books and stuff okay. like that so i've been spending a lot of time trying to understand this you know what is happening and where it's going so i've been involved okay. in cloud like 2007 onwards so I'm very yes. familiar I've wrote some of the yes. standards such like that okay. so for me that's clear so the objective is clear here is the here are the things here is the future yes, and the future is going there. to be this what is the solution the solution okay. in my mind is maybe yes. I'm biased block tech be a solution <laughs> last question before I let you leave what does success for panther protocol look like in this so sort of this three year time frame that you mentioned So literally I would like for at least you know one or two institutions or possibly uh, you, you know uh, the people who really are interested in both sides of the fence right what okay. I call both sides of the fence is defi and traditional finance yes. okay yes. yes and them at least testing the waters okay the thing i describe where the world would be in 3 years time i don't think it's going to happen Uh, right immediately like that right yes there be no. a lot of resistance there will be linear nothing moment, is right? ever linear so yeah it's no no there will be a contact moment no yes. bunch of guys are going to go down i i yes. don't want to be uh you know a casualty in the contact yes. incident yes. right yes. so what i want is like i want this transitioning to happen 
Uh, so they can access DeFi. So a bunch of institutions that actually are interested in accessing DeFi, yes. who understand what is coming down the pipeline, that's the best ones because they can actually leverage Panther yes. to the level that I think is the next level, which is like, you know, you have a bunch of mechanisms to just access a, a, a DeFi, but yes. not just DeFi, you can do transactions straight up. Your yes. transaction pipeline could be just another in interface for Panther. And yes, yes, you know, yes. for Panther, it doesn't matter whether it's inside or outside, it does the same thing, right? Yeah. You do all your transaction, you do all your settling, everything is done in private. You can do use a public chain, so you don't have to do any of these things. You yes. get KYC, you do KYT, you can do as SARs, which is like a suspicious activity reports. All yeah. the things could be done. So to me, yeah. a new bank, who really understands LLMs and Gen AI and understands the future of finance would yes. be like a divide dream. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Dr. Anish, thank you so much for joining me today. You just Welcome. blew my mind. If the listeners want to go and connect with you and Panther Protocol, where can they do that? Oh, it, it's easy. You can either go to panther.org, which is the foundation, okay. which is where everything is going to go to. Okay. And pantherprotocol.io, that's where, you know, uh, most of the development documentation is there. Okay. And uh, you can find me on all the normal usual places, Twitter um, and other places. I will put all the links in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. And to our listeners, right. peace, love and prosperity. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.
I am the shadow you'll never see I am the darkness or you can't be free In this jungle of circuits I take what's mine I'm a predator hunting in real time